Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. Yes, for those of you who haven't joined us before, this is where we look at making bows and arrows. Now, I've got a silly GoPro on my head, but fortunately you can't see that. But what you can see is my hands, and that's the whole point of doing it in this way. So you get to see the process of making bows first hand, excuse the pun. So you get to see what tools I'm using, you get to see what the stave is, you get to see what the work it is that I'm doing, and also with these videos I try and make them a little bit more as is. So you're seeing the process from start to finish, rather than a highly edited piece where I concentrate on one thing. Now there are plenty of those videos on my channel as well if you want to see something very specific, whereas this I try and show a lengthy process and try and show it in convenient chunks. So in this process, well, we're going to be doing some roughing out. Now we've done a three-parter on making a bow, so doing the roughing out and the tillering and the final tillering and finishing processes. I'll stick those up on the cards, I think sort of up here or something, so you can go and look at those, which is a triple laminate. Whereas this bow is a U-bow, or certainly a backed U-bow. Um, as you can see, this is two billets that have been jointed together in the handle there. You can see the joint that we've uh, we've put on. I'm going to shoot that with the other camera there, and I'm probably showing that on the screen now, so you can get a bit of a closer closer look look at the, uh, the wood. And also, um, well, how good this particular piece of wood is. Um, now this, uh, you're probably wondering why this has been jointed. Well, it's because it's from billets. Billets of wood that, uh, say, are three foot six long, approximately. So we're able to joint them together uh, and use them to make a full length bow. As you can see, this is a normal, normal length bow. Uh, in fact, this is intended to be a 50 at 28. Uh, if you're wondering what the RH is, that just means it's going to be for right-handed customer. So we've still got the measurements on here. So this has all been jointed up. A backing of bamboo has been put on and then it has all been cut out to the correct tapers and uh, ready to start doing the main work. Um, as you can probably see from that video, it's a particularly nice piece of view, pretty much free from knots. There is probably a pin here somewhere. Uh, that's probably about the only one that's showing up on the camera there. Um, so we got some decent material here. Uh, if you're wondering also why it was jointed, it's not just because of the length. Um, quite often in a billet of yew, uh, or in a, uh, uh, say in, in a trunk of yew uh, that you've got, um, if you can take the material from the, the same piece, i.e. Uh, its brother and sister pieces, so these pieces would have grown next to each other in the tree. So these aren't two totally separate, separate pieces of wood that have been jointed together. These are from the same um, three foot six length of wood, um, so that we then jointed it together. Um, you can, and other people have asked about this, you can take uh, pieces of wood from separate, separate sources. So you've got a piece that's very clean, as this one is. Um, and say you've got another piece from a completely tr different tree or just from a different um, piece of wood that you've got from the same tree um, but that is also free from knots because you may find in the one trunk you've got one side of the trunk is very knotty or gnarled uh, and you may find the other side is very clean. Uh, this way you can, can take two clean pieces from different pieces of wood and join them together so you get one decent stave uh, but in this case as I say the, this, this wood is from the same piece and they would have grown next to each other say this brother and sister they would have been been next to it next door to each other the only problem with this stave was um, or the wood um, was that the the sap wood wasn't very good uh, for those of you who don't know this is the heartwood this uh, rather pleasing orangey brown color on the U uh, on the backing here uh, would have been a white sapwood uh, you can see some of that does remain here I don't know well that's showing up on here there you can see some more of it there actually but uh, say so we've had to remove that for, for one reason or another uh, to, and have replaced that with the bamboo here. So as I say, uh, this video is going to be roughing out. Um, you may think, well, well, you've already done a video on roughing out. You did one the other day. Well, every single bow is different and every material that you use reacts differently to the various different tools that you would use when roughing out. Um, and for a start, this is you. It's a dangerous material and you will need some A, some extraction. 
ideally work outside if you can, but that isn't always easy for everybody. And a mask. Um, I've got it hooked underneath my chin at the moment so you can hear what I'm saying, but I will be putting that on my face. Uh, so if I sound like an alien, it's just because I've got a mask on, I will try and take it off in between when I'm trying to give you some information. So yeah, um, that is something to, to watch out for, which wasn't quite as much of a problem with the other bow that I was working on, although it was a U triple laminate, that U was in the centre laminate, so I wasn't working on it as much as I would have been. Um, and also, um, U -E, well, it's a much softer wood, it can pick up very easy, and what I mean by picking up is one of the main tools that we used, if you saw the other video when we're doing the roughing out, changing it from this square section to the D shape, is using a tool like this, a bladed tool. Um, it can actually literally pick the wood up and it starts to peel away in big chunks rather than handy small amounts, um, which the, the lemon wood on that other bow um, that I was working on reacts well to being used with, with bladed items. So what I'm gonna do with this one is show you, hopefully, um, how we can rough this one out. So I'm gonna put this into the device here. Okay, and one of the processes I'm going to do is draw a center line down the center of this bow. So I need my pencil and my ruler. Now after the last uh, video I did where I put this center line on, um, quite a few people said, oh I don't, I don't need to bother doing that. Well that, that's fine. Yeah, if you don't need to bother doing that, you're confident enough to do it without that, then that's completely fine. Okay. But for those of us who are new to it, which is really what I'm aiming these videos at, you're gonna find this really, really helps. Okay. So it's just approximate, it doesn't need to be exact, it's just to give you a guide down the bow there. Okay, and then by hand, just fill those marks in. Okay, that gives us a centre line down there. And because I want to keep a track, where this handle section is, I'm going to re-put on the lines that were lost. So that's the top of the handle. Reinstating the center line. You can see it on the side here, so I'm reinstating that on the top. Uh, that's the bottom of the handle there. I'm reinstating those lines so I can keep an eye on where the handle is, because obviously I need to keep some meat in that handle to make sure it stays a handle, because at the moment, I don't know if you can see there, the handle actually goes up and along to the handle is a thicker section then we have the Buchanan dips and then we're stretching out into the actual independent limbs okay so spoke shave let's see what we do with this now as I say this is the one that's going to cause or potentially cause the most damage when working on a soft wood like this that can easily pick up I've got this set very fine so hopefully we should be able to do some of the work with this going very very slowly deliberately slowly at the moment probably don't need to go this slowly but it helps for the camera and also encourages you to not go too fast okay so so far it's been quite kind to us but like I mentioned earlier on and ho hopefully you can see in the uh, close-up video footage that, I, uh, that I'm shooting at the same time as doing this with the camera is that it's a good piece of you. It's a piece of you that's going to lend itself well to being worked with the, these kinds of tools. We haven't got quite the number of knots, um, a change in grain um, or pins or any of those sort of aberrations that you can easily get in this sort of material which makes it much more difficult. So at the moment it's being kind to me. Another wood to watch out for with this is Osage or Osage, however you want to call it. A 
start going down the edge of that now. So I've just taken a corner off. I don't know if you can see that. Just taking a corner off the edge there. Now I'm going to start taking the edge off those edges that I've made, if you see what I mean. So you start to very, very, very slowly we're getting the shallow, shallow D section. So we're just taking off those corners, a bit at a time. And again, I'm watching very carefully as I use this. And I'm also feeling it with my hands if it feels like it's starting to pick or to dig in anywhere. I will stop and I'll move on to other tools. You can see probably just here on the handle section, we're starting to get a dig. I don't know how well that's showing up there. And that's what we're looking for. Any area where it starts to do that, you've got to be very, very careful. Ah, and here, here's another section. So we've got this swirl of wood here. So we've got this change in the grain. We're now getting to the point where I'm probably not going to be able to use the spoke shave on this particular section. So I've probably done as much as I can there. But what I can do to speed the process up, and uh, you may be thinking, well, why am I using this at all? Well, because it's a lot quicker and a lot easier to use than the other methods we have. So I'm going to start from the bottom of this swirl, where this swirl is where it's picking up here. But if I start from this end and work this way, I should be able to get away. Oops, sorry everyone. Just knocking the lighting over. So I should be able to work this way, away from that particular area. Okay, so that's one section pretty much done. So I'm avoiding this area here. So that area there, where we got the swirl, now obviously that goes onto this other side as well, which I'm going to be working on next, so I'll need to do the same process. And this area where we'll end up with a bit more wood, where I've been unable to take some off with the uh, spoke shave, we'll use some other tools, possibly a seraform, I've not seen a seraform before, that's one of those, uh, or even just probably the rasp, which is just as easy. So we'll turn this round to the bench now. Uh, other direction okay again I'm going to be slow again because there may be other areas where I can't see and then when we get to this danger area again with this swirl you can already see where when we've cut it it's slightly picked up so that's the area where I'm going to stop I can even mark that with pencil actually to help me to know to stop to stop there but then I'll be able to work this direction down the bow from here now obviously I could do that the other way round I could come from this direction on this ute from this grain and work with this way but it's such a small amount that I'm going to be avoiding it's easier to do the meat of the bow here with the spoke shave avoid this area carry on down from midway of this swirl and then do that section on here and here with, with a different tool. The less you use the, uh, the spoke shave, if you've got danger areas, the better. getting that uh, 
swirl there. So we're getting a bit of a lump showing where I'm stopping. So I've worked, worked this down to the D section on this other side, getting to the lump. I'm now gonna work from the other side of that swirl, get this section down to the D section. approximate shape there that we want from this bow as far as uh, the roughing out goes so that's the D section there so we're left with this area where I'm going to work on with a different tool that isn't going to pick it up so I'm going to put my mask on now because I'm going to be creating a lot more dust and I'm going to use the uh, rasp here see how we get on that down they wouldn't normally do that just to show you just hopefully make that show up on the camera a bit better so we can see that's that's even now so we've got this rounded shape all the way down the bow you can still see where that swirl is in fact if I take some wood off with the scraper you can probably see that swirl there where we were picking up Okay, so I hope that makes sense that you can, when you've got an area like that, so you've got a center of the swirl, say like this bull's eye, if you imagine, if you work one way for away from it, it won't pick up, and then work the other way for this direction from it, you hopefully won't pick up. But I say the safest thing to do is when you find an area picking up is ignore it. Or a better still, if you're not confident with the spoke shave, is to do all the work with something like a surform and a rasp and you'll hopefully avoid most of those problems because they aren't as serious as a blade they aren't gonna they aren't as likely to dig up so i'm going to just do this other side as well this other other side the other corner here where this swirl is and even that up get rid of the marks from the spoke shave, these linear marks, these long linear almost ridges. I'm actually going to use the uh, the rasp up the, the rest of the limb here. Let's do the other.
I've uh, pretty much got rid of that centre line I made now, so I can carry on now. Now I've really done this, uh, the roughing out the majority of it. I can get rid of that line now, particularly if there's any marks I'm unhappy with. Now the more observant of you would have noticed where I'd worked on that area that had the swirl where I demonstrated showing removing, sorry I'll take the mask off, demonstrated showing removing the, um, the, 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 the marks that we'd made. Um, because I'd already done that with the rasp and when I then did the rest of the bow with the rasp I didn't do as much with the rasp in that area. I avoided it. I know it may not look like it, that's because we've got the rasp marks in it. Um, this is something that's worth bearing in mind. If you've got an area that you're working on separately because of an incident like that, and then you think, right, well, I've got to do the rest of the bow now with one particular tool or one particular stage, is to not put the same amount of pressure onto that area, otherwise you'll artificially start creating a dip. You'll be going over an area twice with the same amount of energy and using the same tool. Um, so if you can, um, it's a case of starting to remember what you're doing over the length of a bow. This is It's a, a very difficult thing to do, um, particularly if you um, haven't got experience in working with bows. But building up a mental picture of what work you've done and what you're about to do um, is very important when working on a bow. You don't end up with one area that you keep working on and you keep then doing the rest of the bow and forgetting that you've already been on that area and end up, as I say, with an artificial dip, an area that didn't need to be a problem. Uh, okay, that's just something to bear in mind. And the other thing, uh, of course, the way I've got this system set up here, so I'm holding in the, in the vise here and then using these U-shaped pieces of wood so I can rotate the bow. Um, it's almost unavoidable uh, you're going to have an area that doesn't quite fit. So I've still got a squared off area, which is the tip area here. So I'm gonna to have to sort that out as well. I'll just do that with the um, grasp. So that's one section completely done. That's now rounded off. Let's compare it to the other section, which is square. There you go. That's the round section. And there's the squared section. Okay, now, now that you've seen where you can have problem areas, a little competition, can you test yourself? Can you see from looking at the grain here where we're going to find a problem. I'm guessing that you probably can. You can see this swirl here. So we're probably going to have the same problem there. There might be one here. And there may even be one down at the, uh, the bottom near the tip. And we've also got a pin here, which I may have to leave proud. We will see. We'll see. This one in the center is so close to the, the middle of the bow here, we can probably get away with that one. But this one's over to one side, so we'll see. We'll see. So I'm going to work on this one now. Uh, I won't say quite as much. Uh, and I'll just let you uh, watch what it is that I'm doing at a, at a sort of normal pace that I normally work at.
see that? See where it picked up? I don't know if that's coming out. See that? Good example. So I won't do any more with the spoke shade there. Obviously gone far enough. So let's use the rasp. lights again. <laughs> so our pin area that I've left pride there. So that's the rasping work done. Just got to do this uh, end here. belly done okay so as you can see it takes a little bit more longer where you've got to take care over the U and how it, uh, how it operates the back is much the same so let's do the backs put this into the vice here I'm just gonna round the edges off of this bamboo <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, now we can get rid of the pith down the middle. The rest of this white section, let's get rid of that as well. No, I'm not getting rid of the nodes. These joints here in the bamboo, I'm not getting rid of those. That would affect the structural integrity of it if I did, so I'm leaving those there. rasping done. I'm going to use the file now on the other side. And then I'm going to use the scraper here. Thank <laughs> you. 
again, just this bit on the end where it's in the clamp. Okay, that's pretty much every mark moved. Mark moved? Mark removed. That's it. That's the phrase. Um, I shan't bore you with the, doing this other end as well. It's going to be much the same process as it was here. And I'm sure you don't need to see it again. So that's the roughing out stage done. Now the next stage is obviously, well, I'm going to carry on and do this other end on the backing. Then I'm going to get the tillering grooves in and I'm going to get this up on the tiller and start seeing how it looks. Now, join us next time, and obviously we can show you the tillering process, because um, I'm going to video that as well. Uh, you may be saying, well, you know, you did that in the other one, we've done plenty of tillering videos. No. And let's take this mask off so you can hear me. Every bow is different. Every piece of wood is different. Every piece of wood and every bow will throw up different problems. And every time you tiller a bow, every time you get a piece of wood to bend, it's different, it will react differently, it moves differently. You will never, ever, ever tiller a bow that's the same ever again. Every bow you will do will be different. So yeah, join us next time. Uh, if you haven't seen the other videos that we did in this series, we did a series of three going from this stage up to a finished bow. Uh, and I'm gonna go, say, gonna do the same again with this, hopefully in three parts. So if you wanna check those other ones out, do, please do. I'll probably put those up on the screen. If you'd like to subscribe and like and all that other groovy stuff, that would be great. And we'll see you next time. Cheers, folks.